Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those who don't know me, I'm Amanda. I'm a brand photographer based in Brisbane. And I gotta say, it has been a while since I have been on YouTube, but hopefully that's about to change. Uh, so in today's video, I wanna run through with you my top five tips for creating high quality skincare product photography. Now, I work mainly in the beauty and skincare niche when it comes to my brand photography business. And I've learned a lot over the past three years. And so I wanna tell you what I believe makes for a high quality standout product photo for skincare, beauty, anything like that. Now, if you're new here and you wanna learn more about brand photography and building a successful brand photography business, I'm sharing all my tips and tricks. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so that you're notified when a new video is released. But let's dive in my top five tips for creating a high quality skincare product photo. So my first tip is to use props that reflect the ingredients of your products. A lot of skincare products these days include natural ingredients and it's a really great way to communicate to your customer that your skincare is natural, that it features these powerful ingredients and that's gonna be good for your skin. For this shoot here, I am shooting a natural deodorant which features key ingredients like a pineapple and a coconut. So I've decided to use a pineapple and a coconut as my main hero props for this shot. Now my second tip when it comes to skincare product photography is that less is more majority of the time. I still think that a photo with lots of props and it looks very busy, this can look effective, but it really depends on the brand and the product, I think. In my personal opinion and having shot skincare for three years, I definitely think that you only need maximum four props, if that, in your frame. And I recommend this because I think skincare is meant to be simple and if we pack too many props into the photo, then it can look too busy and can look too overwhelming. And the other thing too is that sometimes when you have too many props in the frame, then your product can get lost in the photo. And at the end of the day, the product needs to stand out. The product is the hero. So if you have too many props going on, you're taking away the customer's attention and it's going every which way. So this is why I always recommend that less is more majority of the time. Let's take these images as an example. Now this isn't skincare, but the principle still applies. And in these images, I'm actually not using any props at all. I'm also relying on the color pops of the red and pink background and also playing with my light. Now in the first image, you'll notice uh, the kind of um, multiple booty boxes on the pink background, that is all done within Photoshop. Um, and it can be a really effective way to display a product um, that is very eye-catching. And then for these other two images, I've utilized shadow play in order to really enhance the interest of the photo instead of just making it a bit more one-dimensional. Um, and I've played on the colors of the brand, the red and the coral to really make these photos pop. Now compare that more simple style to something like this, where it's a lot more busy. There's a lot going on in this photo. I've used a lot of props. This is actually an older photo of mine as well. I took this a couple of years ago. Uh, it's for a, a product called Glow Dry. She's still my client today. I love the product. Uh, basically you apply the product after you self tan and it dries your tan faster. Um, but the thing is your eyes kind of just go everywhere on this photo. It's a pretty photo um, and I really do love it, but I don't actually think I would do something like this again for skincare or body care. Um, it's just a bit too much and I feel like the product isn't quite standing out as much as it should be. Now my third tip when it comes to creating high quality skincare product photography is to show the texture inside the product. And the main reason for this is because as a customer, when we're scrolling on Instagram, we're targeted by a Facebook ad, we can't touch or smell the product. We can't feel it. And so it can be hard to make a decision based on packaging alone. So by showing the texture, it's really gonna give your customer a good idea of what's inside and maybe how it would feel on their skin. You might even wanna do a photo of the uh, the texture being applied to the skin or a video. And you know what? Everyone loves a good texture shot. 
I know I do. Now my fourth tip when it comes to creating skincare product photography is lighting. Now if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I bang on about all the time not always relying on natural light to take your shots. And there are two reasons for this. One, you cannot fully manipulate natural light, whereas when you're in the studio, you can actually move your lights around to create different shadows, create different lighting effects. And number two, you're not relying on the weather to get your product photos done because if you have a deadline, I don't think it's really professional to email your client and say, hey, it's kind of gloomy today, I can't take your photos. And studio lighting doesn't have to be that expensive. A light I highly recommend is a Godox SL60W and this retails for about $250 or so from Amazon. And I tell you what, it will do the job for you. It mimics natural daylight. And let's just say it's gonna be a game changer. All right, here's a little behind the scenes of a shoot that I did recently. I've got my big soft box over there. Now this is my SL60W Godox light and I've got the hood on it just to create a bit more of a spotlight on my scene. And then on this side, we have our Godox FV150. This is a strobe and continuous light all in one. Um, it's got a very powerful output. I absolutely love this light. And what it's doing with this mirror is creating that soft glow. On this side, we then have a newer LED 480 light. So this is really just illuminating uh, the right hand side of my scene and just providing a little bit more light for me to work with. All right, so here's an example of a shot using that scene. It's just a different product and a slightly different prop setup, but the concept is exactly the same. So the large soft box is used to reflect the light back into the mirror and give this glow effect. And if I didn't have that soft box there, I would be getting my ceiling in the reflection and it would look dark and it would look probably pretty terrible. And then on the right hand side, like I just showed you before, we have the LED light and it's contouring this product really nicely on the right hand side, giving that slight gradient. But when you're looking at the brand's aesthetic, you've really got to mimic the kind of vibe that they're going for. And a lot of that is in the lighting. Is it soft light? Is it harsh light? Is it a mixture between the two. Do they like to have shadows? Do they like to have creative light play? And so by looking at these things, it's gonna help you to get more creative with your product photos and actually produce a better and more interesting photo that is going to be eye-catching to the brand's customers. Now I wanna show you another example of something we did out on location for a brand called Kapari Beauty. Now in this scene here, you can see the light. It's a harsh light, there's no soft box. This is our Godox FV50 continuous and strobe light. And it's just like pushing the light onto our model there to give that harsher effect. Now let's take a look at some video footage we took. This is completely raw out of camera. There's no further editing on this at the moment. But in this bathroom, you can see the shadows created by the taps, we are using this harsh light with no softbox. And this was the kind of lighting aesthetic that the client was going for. So here are a couple of photos from the shoot. We could not achieve this look if we did not have our studio lights with us. Let's take this image here, for example, as well of our beautiful model. Now we've actually got a light directly behind her, which is providing that gorgeous glow and illuminating the right hand side of her face. So the far side. And like I said, we would not be able to achieve this look that our clients specifically wanted for the photos if we did not have a couple of lights with us purely because this bathroom does not get amazing natural light and it just wouldn't have worked. Same concept for these shots as well. These were shot in the same bathroom, just in the shower at the back of the bathroom. And this part of the bathroom is actually quite dark. It doesn't get a lot of natural light. So again, these studio lights are an absolute lifesaver in order for us to pull off the look that our client specifically wanted. So just remember, if you do use natural light, it will limit you as to what you can do. And there will be some things that you won't be able to pull off in terms of looks for clients. For example, I have some clients that come to me and they're like, I want that really harsh 
sunlight effect on the products. And I mean, I live in a two bedroom apartment. I actually can't really do that outside anyway. So I have to rely on my studio lights. But buying my first studio light was actually a game changer for my business. And that's when the quality of my work actually started to increase. And that's when I started to book a lot more clients. Now, my fifth tip when it comes to creating high quality skincare product photography is your editing and your retouching. Now, I am a big fan of using Photoshop to enhance the quality of photos and to retouch images. And if you're not currently using Photoshop, I highly recommend to start learning the basics and just basic retouching techniques. Because when I started utilizing Photoshop to retouch my images, again, this is when the quality of my images increased and I actually started of booking more clients because of this. I want to give you an example of the importance of product retouching and show you a before and after. Now, these were images I did for product pages on a website. The brand is newly launched, so they needed a whole bunch of photos done. The image on the left, this is the original uh, image. This is how the product looks in real life. We have quite a bit of dust. We have a lot of little bubbles in the liquid. And as you can see on the base of the product, the black part of the base, uh, we've got some, uh, some reflections from the light. Now the one on the right hand side, this is completely retouched in Photoshop. You will notice there is no more dust, there are no more bubbles in the liquid, and I fixed up that reflection on the base of the bottle to make it look nice and even. Um, it's smooth and it's looking so much better and ready to be uploaded to a website product page. Now, if you wanna dive deeper into each one of these tips I've shared with you today, I highly recommend to go and check out my online course, Become a Brand Photographer, and I'll leave the link in the description box below. Essentially, if you're someone who wants to become a brand photographer, you wanna know how to book clients, increase the quality of your work, then I teach you everything you need to know inside the course. I hope those tips have been helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'm more than happy to answer them. If you wanna check out more behind the scenes, I share so much more on my Instagram so go and follow me there. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell button, and I'll see you in the next video.